Colonel John B. Gordon at the Battle of Antietam, 6th Alabama Infantry. The first volley from the Union lines in my front sent a ball through the brain of the chivalric Colonel II of North Carolina, to whom I was talking, and another ball through the calf of my right leg. On the right and left, my men were falling under the death-dealing crossfire like trees in a hurricane. Both sides stood wide open at short range without the semblance of breastworks, and the firing was doing a deadly work. Higher up in the same leg, I was shot again, but still no bone broken. I was able to walk along the line and give encouragement to my resolute riflemen, who were firing with the coolness and steadiness of peace soldiers in target practice. When later in the day, a third ball pierced my left arm, tearing asunder the tendons and mangling the flesh, they caught sight of the blood running down my fingers. And these devoted, big-hearted men pleaded with me to leave them and go to the rear, pledging me that they would stay here and fight to the last. I could not consent to leave them in such a crisis. A fourth ball ripped through my shoulder, leaving its base and a wad of clothing in its track. I could still stand and walk, although the shocks and loss of blood had left but little of my normal strength. I thought I saw some wavering in my line near the extreme right, and Private Vickers of Alabama volunteered to carry any order I might wish to send. I directed him to go quickly and remind some of the men of the pledge of ge of ge to General Lee and to stay and to say to them that I was still on the field and intended to stay there. He bounded away like an Olympic racer, but he had gone less than 50 yards when he fell, killed instantly by a ball in the head. Then I attempted to go myself, although I was bloody and faint and my legs did not bear me steadily. I had gone a short distance when I was shot down by a fifth ball which struck me squarely in the face. just missing my juggler vein. I fell forward. I lay unconscious. My face was in my cap, and it would seem that I might have been smothered by the blood running into my cap from this last wound, but from the act of some Yankee who, as if to save my life, had at previous hour during the battle shot a hole through my cap, which let the blood out. Colonel John B. Gordon, 6th Alabama, Sharpsburg, 1862.